my problem is reliability, and the solution I'm going to talk to you about is a potential solution to reliability um, in an area that has traditionally been seen difficult. So back to the question you were talking about, um, Sarah, as to how you take longer pieces of text, whether it's, um, I think you talked about numerical reasoning, um, but frankly, whether we're talking about essay marking or any form of a longer piece of text, how do we get reliable marking into that world? And just to finish on defining the problem, um, the way I would frame it, and I should say here I'm borrowing he heavily on the sort of thoughts, ideas, and things that uh, my colleague for the last years and friend Daisy Christodoulou talks to me about, so um, all the best ideas are borrowed, a lot of what I'm saying to you now is very definitely borrowed. Um, I'm going to talk to you essentially about the problem of the fact that um, markers are asked to make holistic judgments using rubrics or criteria systems, and humans are not very good at making holistic judgments. They're much better at making comparative judgments. That's to say, if you take a piece of work, an essay, and try and come up with a mark for that piece of work, you have to keep in your mind every available piece of evidence or every piece of data from the rubric you're using, and then form a judgment. And you have to be as accurate in your judgments on the 30th piece of work as you were on the first, and humans find that incredibly difficult. What humans find a lot easier is making a comparative judgment. So this will, I expect, not be new to some, and indeed a lot of you. Um, I hope you can see my screen, I'll make it bigger. But I'm gonna to talk to you about comparative judgment as a solution to marking writing work. And I'm gonna do it by referring to a demo from the website of No More Marking, um, a partner of the Centre, a different organisation from us, so it's not something we're doing but it is a partner that we're excited by and that we work with, who I think make this point in a very simple demo more easily than I could to do to you with words. So if you're able to see my screen, imagine that we are going to undertake a piece of marking work, which is to look at some colors and grade them on a one to eight scale. Can you see that scale? So imagine this is your marking rubric, right? From light to dark, one is light, eight is dark, and I'm gonna try and do some marking. So I've got some colors here, right? Now I've remembered that scale before. It was light to dark, this is sort of in the middle. It was one to eight, so I think that's five, is it? I'm gonna guess that that's two. I'm gonna run through this quickly, seven. I'm honestly trying to do this correctly. Uh, how am I doing? Three, five. Trying to remember that scale. I scored six out of eight. That's actually not bad. I think the average result I've seen people running this demo get is something like three or four. It's very hard to remember a marking grid and come up with a series of scores off the back of that and I was really trying my best and I've done this about 10 times and I'm still only six out of eight. So what's the solution of no more marking? The solution of no more marking is to say, don't mark, don't use a holistic scale. Instead, we will get you to compare two pieces of work from two different children answering the same question and just decide which is better or which is worse. And at first it feels like you do if you're a teacher, because you sort of say, well, that's not really marking, is that unfair to the child? But the truth is, and again, I'll scroll down if, so you can see this, I'm now going to do the same thing, that is to say, get a scale of one to eight in the same order, by actually just saying which is lighter or which is darker, and I have to click the darker. And you can time me on this, not least because I'm being timed anyway. Um, I really hope I don't make mistakes. Can you see that the algorithm behind the software, below the scale, is adjusting every time I click to the information I provide it with. Hopefully you can also see the scale is sorting itself out. If I make any mistakes, that's a tricky one on my dark screen. You'll see above that I'm making mistakes, but actually at the moment I'm 18 out of 18, 19 out of 19, and sometime around the 20th judgment. It's actually different every time because it's sort of randomly throwing up two pieces of work. You will end up with a perfect order of this scale. Um, I'm nearly there, aren't I? See it work yourself out. And we got there. Um, the time it takes to do that is always shorter, and this has been studied, there's academic studies that have gone behind this, than the time it would have taken to mark those pieces of work, and it is more reliable. Now, I'm in a room of academics, and therefore, I should probably, rather than using a grand word, like always say, look at the evidence that Professor Chris Whedon, who developed this algorithm, puts on the website, which includes some very thoughtful and nuanced work about reliability. But in essence, what comparative judgment allows you to do is take a problem that you think you have, which is how you get teachers to reliably mark work which is hard to mark, and do that reliably 
using effectively data um, and an algorithmic engine to achieve that goal. And I guess I would just finish by giving you an analogy that what I see comparative judgment as is taking the world of assessment. If we consider, if we consider, people often talk about comparing apples with apples, right? I think some of the teacher assessment frameworks that we've used in the past are comparing apples with trees or oranges or certainly something that isn't apples. Now, if you've got the same question, you could at least say that you're trying to compare apples with apples, but with a holistic scale, you're trying to remember the taste of every apple that you've ever eaten before and say, is this one a tastier apple or a crisper apple? And I've sort of got a rubric in my mind. With comparative judgment, you just take two apples and you tell everyone which was the tastier of those two apples, and that's a better way of comparing apples with apples. And that's what comparative judgment could do for all of us in terms of improving the way we assess, and that's why the DfE mentioned comparative judgment in their recent consultation on primary assessment. This isn't an abstract boffinish idea. This is something we could all be building in to our approaches to assessment in the next five to 10 years to make it more reliable.